Well, this is such an exciting week for Godolphin, not just in the UK with the Guineas, but also, of course, in America with the Kentucky Derby. And Jimmy Bell joins me, of course, the president and racing manager for Godolphin USA. And how are you feeling? Are the nerves starting to jangle ahead of the big race on Saturday? You know, I would like to say they are, but so far, so good, calm. I think when the closer, I'm in Lexington, every time you get up around the big twin spires, things kind of, the heartbeat picks up a little bit. Uh, a little different this year with, with not as many folks around. I think just the, the, the busyness of the crowds and the backstretch in the morning uh, has been a little different this year, but at least we're there, we're moving around. There are going to have, you know, plenty of fans in the stands and it's going to be a great day, but uh, just trying to keep it under control here till we get, a little closer to the weekend, not the weekdays here, but but everybody's so excited and so looking forward to it. And, you know, something I would say is that, uh, you know, it shouldn't be lost in this whole thing, the process or the journey that that uh, Central Quality has gone from, you know, an unblemished record to being a champion two-year-old to coming through his three-year-old season under different circumstances. Um, you know, he, he gives a lot of calm to everybody because he's answered the question every time it's been asked. And is he a calm horse? Is he easy to deal with? What's he like to be around? Well, that's that's a that's a great question. Um, he 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 is a calm horse. I think he's got great energy. He's very focused. And what I really note the most about him after every work, and you know, these horses get geared up a little bit. He just turns home and drops his head. And you can't tell did he just gallop or did he just breeze, and he cools out very quickly. So. Going into a race of this magnitude with 20 horses, with the, with the whole, everybody can feel the intensity building up. Uh, he's been a pretty cool customer, five for five, and I uh, hope, that, hope that continues. And Godolphin have tried so hard to win this race. They've tried bringing horses from here in Dubai. They've tried a bit of everything. This is the best chance so far, though, surely. Well, he, he'll be the deserving favorite in the race, uh, obviously, off of an un five for five record, a champion two-year-old. He's come back and won both of his prep races uh, in impressive fashion. You know, he's had five races and he's had five different trips in every one of them. In his first race, uh, we just really wanted to get him started going three quarters. Brad had always said, just wait till he goes around two turns. You'll see the real essential quality. Uh, he was able to get in trouble, get out of trouble in that race and finish up in a very, very fast time to break his maiden. Obviously, we were very anxious about running two turns and, the Breeders' Fraternity was just down the road, and, and he laid just off the lead there and, you know, was very, very impressive in that race. Come back for the Breeders' Cup, he's way back in eighth place, comes from way off the pace to win that race. And again, you know, for this year, he's come up on a very sloppy racetrack, handled that very, very well, and then came back and gotten his first true dogfight in the bluegrass over highly motivated, which they basically hooked up from the top of the stretch all the way to the wire. And, Inside the 16th pole, he showed that will to win and has really shown you every element you hope to see in a horse of this caliber. So uh, to answer your question about calm, if you keep thinking about what he's done, that, that does calm your nerves a bit. Yeah, he has, as you say, he's done it every way, hasn't he? The hard way, the easy way, he is special. I suppose he's that little bit more special because he's come through the Godolphin ranks and he's a homebred. Well, I think that that's really the cherry on top for, for His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and, and all that he has. And, and now these great race mares have been turned into brood mares and have come through the racing program. And to be a homebred, I think, is just is just the, the ultimate specialness of this whole thing. There's so many people involved from the matings to the foaling to the yearling on the farm to the pre-trainers down to finally to Brad that, you know, so many hands have passed over him in this in this whole Godolphin operation and I think uh, there's a great great sense of pride from everybody and the fact that we got to watch him run here at Keeneland just across the street from from the farm here to in the Breeders Futurity and the Breeders Cup uh, it really boosts the morale and just you can you can sense everybody's uh, just very excited to be a part of this whole this whole journey. And I suppose it's quite of a new approach for Godolphin America in that there's now quite a few trainers under the under the blue banner. Yeah, that's 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 a good point to bring up. You know, as our horse numbers elevated, uh, we we had once hoped that everything we had were New York bound and New York quality. And the truth of the matter is, they're not. As much as we hope that's the case, uh, you know, that's the that's the pinnacle of our racing for the most part, year in or around year round is in New York. And we stepped back and we said, hey, you know, there's such a gaping hole in the Midwest. There, you know, we'd like to have a presence down in New Orleans at the fairgrounds and Oakland and over in Arkansas. 
And quite honestly, the, the Kentucky circuit has just gotten very, very strong in the last couple of years. And we really want to be a part of the Kentucky racing circuit and support that and be a part of that. And so that's where Brad came from, where he, he spends a lot of time in New Orleans, in Oakland, in the Kentucky circuit, uh, as well as, as, well as uh, Brendan Walsh. You know, those were two new additions to the Midwest and Michael Stidham as well. So oddly enough, we ran at 30 different racetracks last year. So that's wow. a far cry from just trying to focus on one or two. And it's uh, the great thing is, is that, you know, not all horses are created equal. And really we get a chance to give them an opportunity to be competitive where they can be competitive. They can always climb that ladder. So just because they may not be just ready for New York, you know, Oakland might suit a certain horse or the fairgrounds or, you know, that sort of thing. And we've seen them now come from all corners that each great news is that, you know, Mike Stidham's had a great horse now in Mystic Guide and with Proxy and uh, obviously Brendan with, with uh, prevalence here on a three-year-old trail as well as, as Maxfield and of course Brad with Essential Quality and Billy Mott's got a nice horse called Speaker's Corner. So the good news is through good luck, lady luck, they, I, everybody's had a, a really nice three-year-old to, uh, to spread around and, and also kind of come up through different routes throughout the racing program across the country. Yeah, it's been so exciting following the progress over the last few years. And you mentioned Mystic Guide there, of course, one of the main beneficiaries of this new approach. How's he been doing since he, he got back to, to the U.S.? He, he actually would like to be doing a lot more than, than Mike and Hillary would like for him to do. Uh, he came out of the race in great shape, got home. And as we all know, that's, that's no easy venture to bring one that distance to come over there and show up on the night the way he did uh, in emphatic fashion. Uh, but once he got back, he's here at Keenan right now. Mike and Hillary tried to have him jog for as long as they could. He had enough of that. Now he's galloping and he said, boy, we almost need to work him. He's just feeling, he just looks well. He's recovered excellent. And there's probably nothing on the agenda him till really like the first of July. So we're trying as much as we can to give him as much downtime as possible, but, uh, he's, he's thinking otherwise. Mm, it was fantastic. And how exciting was it for you to watch him win the way he did? Well, it was. I mean, I think that's that's a, a testament to to Mike Stidham and the patience that he showed as his three year old. We, we, he always said this is this horse is, is going to be really good. He's just not quite as forward mentally or, or physically as some of these other three year olds at this point in time. And we, we elected to take sort of a different route rather than just the Derby was knocking at the door. But he really wasn't really ready to take on that race that time. And I think we ran him in the Jim Dandy the same day as the Kentucky Derby was being run. He won that. He came back and ran against all the horses in the jockey club. And you could just now see that great um, transition from, you know, really figuring it out to making that next major step when he went into grade one against all the horses in the fall of the year. And, you know, he just continued to develop late fall and, and uh, into this year. And when he ran in Oakland and just gave that wild performance, he looked like the patience and the timing had just paid off and uh, looked like he always wanted to go the mile and a quarter. And we said, here we come, do our World Cup. Yeah, well, it, it was a beautifully executed plan. It really was from, from start to end. And you mentioned the 1st of July. Is there a penciled in race or even racetrack? Thing? Yeah, maybe 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 something like the, the Suburban uh, at Belmont is, is, a, is a, probably about as early as we want to kind of start that second half of his campaign. You know, we, we really put... Uh, everything on the Dubai World Cup because you, you realize you're going to take some time, win, lose, or draw coming out of that race. And uh, coming out of it as a winner makes it a little easier to give all the time you can. It's not like we've got to scramble to catch up again. And I just think he really proved an awful lot about his true, how dominant he was and, and what a genuine mile and a quarter older horse he's transformed into being. So probably the first putting the toe back in the water, I, I, would, I would guess right now, tentatively is the is suburban at Belmont. I think it's like July 3rd or 4th of July weekend. 